Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about this problem here where we have a function that's a polynomial function in the factor form and we want to find the local maximum and the minimum values for this function. And so the usual way is to do it by um, finding the critical numbers and then we want to classify the critical numbers by using the first derivative test. And to do the to use the first derivative test, we actually need to construct a sign analysis chart to see where the function is increasing and decreasing and so that we can classify the critical numbers. So let's do that. So first, um, you may ask if you just look at this function and um, should we expand this function? The answer is no. We are just going to directly take the derivative here by using the product rule and the chain rule, which will just make the calculation actually easier. Okay, so um, let's find y prime first. So y prime of x is equal to okay so you can see that that's really just a product of two functions the first function is the x1 x minus 1 to the third power and then the other one is x plus 4 to the second right so for the product rule we are going to differentiate the first function first right and then we copy the second function okay so if we do that then we are going to be getting let me just highlight the part that we are differentiating and then we don't highlight the part that we do not differentiate so we get 3x minus 1. We are going to use the general power rule here. And then you subtract 1 from the power. And then you do not change the second function. So we just copy. And then now the second turn is that we are going to copy down the first function. Don't change anything. And then we are going to differentiate the second function, which will give us this. And after the differentiation, it's still not a good idea to explain bend this right because it's just a lot of calculation you can but um it's not necessary so the way that we simplify this f prime to find the critical numbers is that we are going to factor out the greatest common factor so you can see that they're a greatest common factor there's an x minus one x minus one here x plus four x plus four here right with some powers and so in that case we will factor out as much as we can so in this case, we are going to factor out the x minus 1 square because there are two copies right here, three copies right here. So the maximum number that we can take out from both would be two copies at least, right? Well, so we factor out the x minus 1 square, okay? And then the other factor would be the x plus 4. Then we only have one copy here, right? So we are just going to factor out the x plus 4. And then we are going to just get the stuff that's left in there which would be, um, so the three is left in there. And then the X minus one score is already completely factored out. So we only have uh, another factor of the X plus four. So X plus four right here, plus, okay. This plus sign right here comes from this plus sign right here. And then we factor out the X minus one square from the X minus one cube. So we are left with one copy with the two, right? So don't forget the two. And so the 2 times x minus 1. Yeah, we don't have the x plus 4 anymore because we factored that out, right? So now we just need to simplify this. And from here, we are going to be getting x minus 1 square and then x plus 4. And then here distribute. So we get x 3x plus 12 plus 2x minus 2. Okay, continue with the calculation here. I'm just going to go a little bit faster here with the calculation because you know that this is really just basic combining like terms, right? So we are going to be getting uh, 5x uh, plus 10, right? So do you see that this, you can also factor out the 5 if you want, right? So you have, oh, actually we get a factor of the 5. So we get 5 in the front, x minus 1 square, x plus 4, and then x plus 2 after you factor all the 5. Is that okay? So now this is the, um, you can think of this as the simplified form of the first derivative. So what we do is that we are going to write down the critical numbers, right? So what are the critical numbers right here? Critical numbers, how do you find them? Is that, so there are two cases. One of the cases, actually, let me just, um, just write it down here, f prime is equal to zero. So you set the derivative equal to zero and then you can find your critical numbers. So what are they when you set this equal to zero? If you set this equal to zero, then because it's already in the factor form, then figuring out the critical numbers would actually be really easy. It would be 
x equals 1 x equals negative 4 and then x equals uh negative 2 right so we got three critical numbers right here then you may say what about the other case when we find a critical numbers that's when f prime does not exist i mean based <clears throat> Um, based on what we have here, this is a polynomial, so there is no value for which f is undefined. So in that case, there is no, there is none, right? So we don't really get anything here from this case. So um, the only critical numbers would be those three. Now the next thing is to do what? The next thing is to do the sign analysis chart. Okay, so that's what we are going to do right now. So sign analysis chart on the um, the f prime right on the f prime so yeah let me actually i'm not going to bother with this thing yeah so right now what we are doing is that we are going to construct the lumber line right so we construct the lumber line right here and then this is the x-axis. And then we are just going to put our critical numbers on the lumber line. Make sure that you put them in the correct order. So we are going to put negative like four first because that's the smallest amount of the three. And then the other one is the um, the like the two. I didn't put it in scale because I just want it to be easy for me to uh, do the sign analysis, right? So I'm just going to just put them like this, okay? So you know that the distance between the negative two and one should be longer than the distance between negative four and negative two. But let's not worry about that. Okay, so right now what happens? Um, we gotta just plug in a number in uh, each interval. Okay, plug it back into the uh, the f prime. Um, we can put plug it back into this one so that we can actually see whether we are getting a, a a positive number or a negative number. If we are getting a positive number, then we can say that the function is increasing. Otherwise, we will say that it's if it's a negative number, then we get that it's decreasing. Okay, so the easiest one that we gotta plug in here would be to plug in. Um, just pick the zero here, right? Because you have a negative number, you have a positive number, zero is between them. And so now we pick the zero, you plug it back in here. Now, when we do the sign analysis, we actually don't really care about the, the actual number that we're getting. We only care about its sign, okay? So do you see that there is a five right here? That's positive. This x minus one, we don't know whether that's positive or negative. It can be both positive or negative, but because of the square of the whole quantity. This is always positive in this case. You're not going to get zero actually because you're not going to plug in the one in here because one is one of the critical numbers. So um, if you are picking a number and you plug that in here other than the critical numbers, then this would always be positive. It's something that we don't even bother considering right here. So the only factors that can affect the signs would be those two. Okay, so you put the zero in here, you get positive, right? It's positive four. But again, as I said, you don't really care about the, the what number is equal to, we only care about the sign. So positive, and then put in the zero, we also get positive. Now what? Well, the whole thing is positive. See that it's actually quite easy, right? I ignore the five and the x minus one square because they don't contribute to the sign change, right? They're always positive here. So now the next one, next one, if you pick the right hand side of one, you can pick like 1000, right? You can pick two if you want, but sometimes uh, if the domain allows, you, if you pick 1000, it makes the um, checking the sign a lot easier. 1000 plus four, 1000 plus two. Well, yes, they're both positive. So positive times positive, positive. Okay, now this one, um, we can pick an easy number like negative three. Okay, so negative three, negative three plus four, positive. Negative three plus two, negative. Okay, so positive times negative, we get a negative number right here. Okay, last one, we pick negative 1,000, right? So we just pick the negative 1,000 here. And then what do we do right now? 
negative 1,000 plus 4, negative. Negative 1,000 plus 2, also negative, right? So you have two negative numbers multiplied together. In this case, you're going to get what? Positive. So we can already say that, that the function is increasing right here. Then the function is decreasing here. Then the function is increasing and also increasing, right? So you have the function increasing here, increasing here. And so if you want to just find the local max and local mean, then you can. It's actually quite easy here. Um, if you want, I can also write down the intervals of increase and decrease, which will be nice, right? So we can write it as, um, so let me see. Intervals of increase and decrease. So what are this? It, we would have negative infinity to negative four. Then the other one is from negative two all the way to infinity, right? So negative two to infinity. Now the interval decrease. Interval decrease would be negative four to negative two, right? So just one interval. Now going back to the chart, we can actually see that if the function has been increasing, then it will have a shape like that. So you will get increasing. And then when you when the graph hits this negative four, and then it will change to decreasing. Okay, so and then it's decreasing until negative two. And then when it hits negative two, it will increase. Now I'm not going to show any draw anything right here because it will just keep increasing, right? So there is a local max here, then there is a local min here. Okay, so we actually have uh, identified the, the locations of the local max and the local min. All we need to do right now is define the values. So we're going to say what? We are going to say that um, local max. is when you have what f of what is the local maximum value the value is talking about the y value here so you need to plug in the location location is uh, let me see where that is negative four right so you plug the negative four in here remember when you plug the negative four you are not plugging back into the derivative you're plugging back into the original function do you see that when you plug in the negative four here negative four plus four you are going to get zero zero times anything is zero so you know that without calculation well showing the calculation anyway it looks like this but you know that the answer will be zero so the local maximum value would be zero Okay, and then what about the local min? Well, the local min is when we plug in negative 2 into the function, we have the local min value, which would be f of negative 2. So in that case, we get a uh, negative 2 minus 1 cube, and then negative 2 plus 4, and then square. I'm not going to show the calculation here. You know how to calculate those um, basic calculation right here. So um, if we do that calculation, we are going to be getting, this is uh, negative 108. Is that okay? So if you want to write them down as the, um, the form of a point, then the local maximum point would actually be negative four, zero. And then if you want the, um, the local minimum point, it's going to be negative two. And then you put in the y value, which is negative 108. Is that okay? So that's that's that. So that's how we can figure out the local max and local min using the first derivative test, right? You can also do the second derivative test, but then um, you actually just need to do more work if you're using the second derivative test, even though you don't need to do the sign, right? But you need to take uh, the second derivative based on this, and that's more product rule that you have to worry about. Is that okay? And so um, if we look at the graph, we have a graph that looks like this. So I'm just going to, well, we don't need the first derivative anymore, so I'm just going to put that right here so that we can compare at the same time, right? 
So do you see what's going on here? We have the leg the four zero, which is actually this is the local max right here. What about um, the local minimum point, which is right here? As you can see, that's leg the two and leg the one hundred eight. That's slightly smaller than leg the one hundred, as you can see here. That okay? So that's it for that problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will